All right. Uh, yeah, it, it, that even with limited time, I think what I'm going to do uh, in this, uh, for those of you that are sticking around and for those of you that watch the recording later, uh, the goal here is to actually throw a lot of information at you. Um, but as, uh, as, been, as has been pointed out, these slides are available uh, for anybody that is interested in a particular program. Uh, certainly in 20 minutes, I'm not going to be able to provide uh, complete uh, an absolute overview of each individual program, but certainly uh, interested in any follow up with anybody about a particular program of interest. Uh, but basically the, the whole goal here is to provide an overview of all of the spending from the CARES Act and from uh, the most recently passed Paycheck Protection Program and Healthcare Enhancement Act which was essentially just uh, an increased appropriation for some existing programs. So Bridget, you can click forward. So there are currently four phases to the congressional response uh, that we've talked about uh, a number of times. Uh, phase one being mainly just uh, about responding to COVID. Phase two, uh, including some sick leave and unemployment and uh, emergency family medical leave act issues. Phase three is the CARES Act uh, that got a lot of uh, attention, which was passed on March 27th. Because of the oversubscription and the need of particular programs in there, we saw a phase four, or kind of a phase three A uh, that was passed just last week uh, that was called the Paycheck Protection Program and Healthcare Enhancement Act. In total, you're looking at about $2.8 trillion that has been spent. Uh, and I put a phase five on there is to be determined. Congress will come back uh, in early May potentially uh, and start looking at uh, whether or not uh, all this money has been utilized and if there's an existing need. Uh, and there's also discussions about potentially funding uh, infrastructure programs to look similar to uh, probably the stimulus in 2009, which would be much more program, programmatic focused. So Bridget, you can go on. In the CARES Act specifically, and we've talked about this a number of times, uh, the big ticket items that, that everyone uh, heard about were the direct payments, stimulus payments to taxpayers, uh, being $250 billion of, of the $2 trillion bill. Uh, second, this $500 billion, this is mainly for, for large uh, uh, for-profit businesses. Uh, this was where uh, they're also trying to assist the, the airlines. Uh, and then one uh, that a lot of people uh, ha have it, had interest and accessed uh, through this program, through the community circle conversations, and we've dealt with a lot of uh, questions about that, is uh, the uh, Paycheck Protection Program. That was $349 billion that went out the door uh, and was utilized in eight days. Um, and th that was another big ticket item uh, in this bill. And then finally, of the largest uh, items is unemployment insurance expansion, which we covered last week uh, with some changes related to uh, specific benefits, uh, trying to impact gig economy employees, uh, trying to provide an offset for nonprofits that may have to do layoffs or government entities. You can move on, Bridget. The other items that we have talked about less uh, is the healthcare industry in the CARES Act received $100 billion uh, in, uh, in, in, in appropriations to try and offset uh, revenue losses and to be able to address uh, COVID-19 uh, response and reaction. There's also an additional $50 billion that was for PPE. Uh, what I would say is out of the 100 billion, they've already put 50 billion out in the streets uh, and we will cover uh, that in much more specific detail. Healthcare providers are essentially defined as people receiving Medicare and Medicaid payments. We'll uh, discover that in future, uh, future sessions like this. States and municipalities, there was another $150 billion there. Uh, the state of Iowa uh, does not have, those were focused on 500,000 plus cities. So Iowa's came in a pro rata format. And so the, the state share is what you might hear from the governor's press conferences, $1.25 billion. They're then figuring out how to utilize and fill some gaps of maybe where the CARES Act didn't. Transit programs, emergency education funding, you can see uh, those, those there. 
uh, and maybe of interest to people is an additional 15 billion to SNAP uh, and 9 billion for child nutrition to replace school meals. That, that's a little um, unclear as to how that will uh, be utilized. There are existing programs that maybe some nonprofits are utilizing uh, around central Iowa, uh, but obviously uh, you can't put uh, money into a school nutrition program uh, if you're not having kids go to school. Um, so how they're going to uh, get to these kids that, that would have needs uh, still kind of remains to be seen and is uh, changing daily. On the agricultural front, uh, you'll see uh, the, the same program uh, that was utilized uh, to offset losses from the trade uh, wars gets expanded in this. Bridget, you can move on. Now, these are the new programs that we did not discuss uh, at length. Telehealth got an additional $200 million for, uh, through the FCC, uh, and that is currently being deployed. Uh, there's a massive boost in uh, the provision of, of healthcare through telehealth and telemedicine over the last month. The Rural Business Assistance Program, this is through USDA's Rural Development. Uh, rural business programs, uh, many people that you'll interact with, uh, you know, especially in rural areas, utilize rural housing service uh, for purchases of homes. This would be direct uh, loans uh, and programmatic spending grants as well through the Rural Business Cooperative Service. Uh, some of you may be using before RBOG, RBEG, uh, some of those rural community development grant programs. So rural development did get a boost in those programs. Uh, it's not massive. Uh, but certainly be on the lookout for those grants uh, and RFPs out there. FEMA received an additional $45 million to address disasters. Uh, this will go through the normal lines. It won't be direct grants, but ultimately uh, how a, a standard uh, disaster funding is utilized. Uh, the next two are, have been of interest to people, and, and I have a, a real-time update on this. The National Endowment of the Arts and the Endowment for the Humanities got $75 million each. Uh, th so the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs will receive their pro rata 40%. Out of the 40%, um, our Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs uh, will receive uh, their pro rata portion. The 60% in direct grants, uh, while may be of interest to people, uh, what we've found is the 60% on the arts side uh, is only for existing recipients of National Endowment for the Arts, uh, which is extremely limiting. There's only a handful of uh, entities in Iowa uh, that have received a grant before. Uh, and that's something we're looking at through this process and, and holes we've identified to see if there are other avenues and, and funding sources. On the humanities side, this is something that Chris Kramer, the director of the uh, Cultural Affairs Department, if anyone is of interest, think that you can apply certainly reach out to me and we can get you in touch with her. Child Care and Development Block Grants that many of you may be utilizing gets an additional boost of 3.5 billion. Children and Family Services, an additional bump of 700, 750 million for Head Start. Uh, and this has been of interest that uh, some people have talked to us about. If you're uh, thinking about uh, programs that maybe utilize uh, congregate meals, or uh, additional funding for uh, the elderly and aging. There was an additional nearly billion dollars and 500 million of that is for nutrition services for uh, senior citizens. Uh, and also an additional 100 million for support and services. And as I said it, from the beginning, this is a lot of information throwing at you. Uh, and the whole intention here is for, uh, to put together a, a short brief rundown of what these programs are uh, but if anybody has interest in any particular program to then reach out to me and, and I can get you the particulars about how that money will flow uh, to the state. You can move on, Bridget. Uh, this one is uh, the education money, an additional $30 billion. Uh, and hit the second to first, 43.9% um, goes directly through K through 12s. Um, they have broad discretion, but it's essentially a pro rata based upon students that are covered under the education titles. Similar on the Higher Education Relief Fund, uh, it's related to the amount of students that, that, that they track through FAFSA and, and other avenues. Uh, those are essentially dictated as to how the money goes. However, our governor will get a pro rata portion 
of so of the 30 billion 9.8 percent of that uh, will be given uh, to governors their own discretion uh, and, and ultimately can be used for anything uh, that she would determine so um, the pro rata portion of that 9.8 percent uh, is dictated based upon the k-12 through students uh, that would be covered under uh, the the second portion and then also the college students covered under uh, uh, under the third portion. Uh, so we've had discussions with the governor's office about this funding. It isn't in the bank yet, uh, but certainly we want to make sure that we're covering gaps uh, that, that maybe weren't covered with other funding streams. Bridget? Uh, VA gets an additional, uh, and this is mostly for any of you serving veterans. Uh, it's mainly for VA uh, administration benefits, but certainly medical services. Uh, and medical community care. So if someone is not being serviced directly by a VA hospital, there's the ability to, to get those payments uh, from the VA through the health administration. Bridget? Uh, and these are the new HUD, pro, uh, not, uh, additional money for HUD programs that maybe people uh, uh, through this community circle uh, are utilizing. Uh, I put, tried to put the CFR titles and Housing Act titles uh, and specific uh, legislation on here uh, to hopefully give people uh, a little bit of a key as to maybe you're using one of these programs uh, in an existing fashion uh, so that you would reach out and say, hey, uh, that's of interest to me. We do use the housing and community development block. Um, but these are the bump ups in programs that HUD administers uh, and were, were potentially of interest for folks relating to homelessness assistance uh, community development, housing for the elderly, uh, and housing for persons with disabilities. So as I, I said, you know, this is a lot of information thrown at you very quickly, uh, but certainly if any of these are of interest to you, I have the details and can walk you through uh, the legislation uh, as to how this money is getting outlaid. Some of it is going out the door very quickly, uh, like the healthcare provider fund. Uh, some of that 50 billion was immediate uh, into people's checking account. Uh, some of these uh, have not yet uh, been determined how they will be outlaid and how quickly. Bridget? Uh, and I think you could go on. That was one more slide. Yeah. And I think that's the, the, the coverage overview. Oh, I'm sorry. Go back one. I'm sorry about that, Bridget. Yeah. What I did want to provide is an overview of the final phase uh, that we've seen thus far. far. Uh, and just try and get people to, to wrap their heads around. That final phase that we saw passed last week is simply just a bump up of existing programs. Uh, an additional 300 billion for the Paycheck Protection, an additional 60 billion uh, for the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. Uh, and, and so if anybody was trying to get in the queue for PPP and didn't, uh, I would be uh, heading there as quickly as possible. The first 350 billion, uh, went out the door in eight days. Uh, I would guess that this next 300 billion will go out in less than that amount of time. Uh, you can see some set-asides for smaller banks, which may be uh, a strategy for someone who didn't get in that first tranche uh, to maybe find a smaller community bank to work with uh, to try and get their money in. The EIDL, I think I've mentioned this before as well, uh, there were 280, 383 billion in applications uh, so I doubt that even this additional 60 billion will, will come close to, to what the need is. And finally, uh, as I mentioned, this public health and social services emergency fund, this is additional funding for healthcare providers. So now they've outlaid 175 billion in funding for healthcare providers, which again, are people that are providing Medicaid and Medicare uh, support services. Um, and they've already hit, distributed $50 billion, which was based upon Medicare and Medicaid health uh, revenue. Um, it's not as simple and shouldn't be seen as free money. Uh, and we've had a number of one-on-one -on -one conversations uh, about this where uh, we're going to have a future webinar on this process so that people understand the restrictions and the ties to that money. And that's it for this week. We'll see you next week. All right, thank you so much, Dustin. Um, just a few final things as we have everybody zooming back to rejoin us. Um, we uh, did want to, I will actually send in the chat box here, 
um, a link to our COVID-19 resources page. Um, so we will be uh, sending out the recordings as we do um, in our follow-up email um, and wanted to let you know that we have uh, templates on our page um, for Giving Tuesday now. So um, there are fillable PowerPoint slides and they're pre-formatted to Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. And um, so if you want to be part of Giving Tuesday now, would recommend you checking out that resource. I know Giving Tuesday Now also has some on their site. We will be promoting GiveDSM um, quite heavily as part of our Giving Tuesday Now um, engagement with our audiences. So um, that's a great opportunity to get um, your funding needs up on GiveDSM. Um, and I did do a little recording kind of walking through what GiveDSM is we can send out as well. Um, so we will be planning um, the, the partners who are presenting community circle conversations will be planning um, out our future session topics and we'll be meeting I think it's tomorrow um, to talk about that so um, before you hop off today if you're back with us and you wanted to either privately chat to me or um, just post in the, the group chat what would be you know one or two things that you really want to hear about or talk about in this community circle conversations what's your favorite thing about coming here on Wednesdays we've had um, you know, excellent return participation. We're seeing about 80 or 90 of you a week. Um, but it, it's been interesting looking at the survey data about half the people, you know, just want to be talked at and about half the people want to talk to everybody else. So, you know, we've been seeing that play out with our options to either participate in the breakout room or stay here. So um, in the chat box, please uh, just pop in, you know, what's most helpful to you? What do you want to see more of? Um, how can we we best serve you. These community circle conversations are for our nonprofit community um, and we want to be providing you with the resources that you would find most helpful. So um, with that, I will keep this um, meeting open for a few more minutes, but I will go ahead and um, turn off my video. Um, and uh, I just welcome you to enter that in the chat box. Give us some feedback. Let us know what you like or um, even what you don't like. That's fine. Um, be well and I look forward to seeing you.